Hello and welcome back to the Duke Scopy TV studio. It's that time of the week once again where Dr. Frank Hollenbeck joins us in the studio to discuss another financial topic. This week we're discussing the state of the European economy. Dr. Frank, thank you very much for coming in today. Good to be back. So Eurozone GDP shrank by 0.2% in the second quarter and is expected to contract further in the third quarter. What does this say and do you agree with those expectations? Well, uh, as we can see from uh, these graphs, we see that uh, European countries having a very difficult time uh, reaching their deficit targets. And we can see that debt is continuously to grow. And uh, Europe is essentially in a recession today, likely to be in a recession 2013, so things are likely to get even worse. Um, I like to use an example uh, of Great Britain in uh, 1918, uh, just after World War I. They had a debt to GDP ratio of about 140%. And they did something very similar to what we're doing in Europe, in the sense that what they did is they cut government expenditures and they raised taxes. And what happened in the case of um, Great Britain after World War I is that their debt to GDP ratio actually increased increase from 140 to 190 and we're seeing the same thing in the case of Greece is going from 120 to well over 170 okay and um, UK experienced basically 15 years of relatively uh, slow growth uh, the average growth over that 15 year period between 1918 and 1933 was minus 0.2 percent so we could see that it took uh, the UK a very very long time to get their economy back on the right track and I'm afraid that we're likely to see the same thing in Europe. Now, one of the things I said about a year ago, I said I think that Spain, uh, Italy, and even France are simply uh, Greece with a couple of years delay. I still hold to that view. Uh, I still think that uh, we're going to see the same problems in these countries that we saw in, uh, in Greece. Okay? And we have to realize that um, the stability fund, the ESM, has 500 billion, but for me there's only really really 200 billion, that's serious money. That's from the northern countries, Germany, Austria, and the, North, the, the other northern countries that are part of um, uh, the, the euro. And uh, 200 billion is already eaten up when you think about uh, the fact that 50 billion is going to go to Spanish banks. Uh, Spanish banks will probably need another 100 billion. Um, we have Greece that's basically, s we're finding out that they need 30 billion, they don't need 20 billion. We have Cyprus who's asking for 10 billion. So when we start adding up all of the additional requirements we get up to 200 billion very quickly and what's going to happen uh, is that the ESM once it goes beyond uh, 200 billion once it borrows more than 200 billion it's going to find it difficult to raise funds um, it's kind of hard to ask the ESM to raise funds on Spanish guarantees okay to give to Spain who can't raise money on Spanish guarantees okay so for me is that we have a relatively there's really not and there's really not an, any money out there for us to uh, bail out Spain or even consider Italy or even France. But will the ECB's commitment to unlimited purchase of Spanish debt, how far will that go to make things better? Well, uh, the ECB has been able to get what it wants, which is a lower uh, interest rate for Spanish debt, without having to fire a shot. A bit like uh, the Swiss National Bank was able to get the exchange rate above 1.2 without really doing anything. But as we've seen in the last year, the Swiss National Bank has had to intervene massively. In other words, we see that M1 has increased almost 100% in Switzerland. So uh, in the case of Switzerland, they've basically given up control of their money supply to hit this exchange rate target. Now in the case of uh, the ECB, they will also have to ultimately intervene and uh, purchase uh, Spanish debt. The question is, is how long can they do that before they run out of uh, German debt to uh, counteract the effect on the money supply? Um, the um, Federal Reserve tried that in 2008, but they just ran out of of US bonds to sell. So ultimately they ended up monetizing the debt. And the same thing will occur with the ECB. Ultimately we'll have to monetize the debt. And then we run into a problem with Germany in the sense that they fear uh, inflation from uh, the creation of additional uh, money. That's the real issue is what will happen when we get to that point where the ECB has to basically monetize the debt and it runs into German opposition about uh, printing more money. 
Now, Frank, this is a pretty negative picture that you're painting of the current situation. What are your views for the future then? Well, my fear is that we are going to go down the road of Greece in the sense that we're going to see extremist parties uh, become more and more important, uh, both left-wing and right-wing parties. Um, also, we have a situation in Greece where we're in a negative, negative growth uh, death spiral in the sense that since there's no investment being made, uh, the capital base is declining and growth comes from increasing capital. So for me, it's, uh, it's a pretty negative outlook, uh, at least for the next 10 years in Europe. Frank, thank you very much for coming back into the studio. Dr. Frank Hollenbeck there. We'll be back in the studio with Jennifer Cordingly next week. For now, though, goodbye.